Have you said your goodbyes to the light? It's Sunday morning on CBS, and here again is Charles Osgood. The 1994 movie Interview with the Vampire brought to life, so to speak, the characters Anne Rice created in her classic Gothic novel. This morning's interview with Anne Rice is considerably more subdued, but I think you'll find no less intriguing. John Blackstone presents our Sunday profile. And that's where I work, right there. I jump into this chair before I'm awake. I roll out of bed. <laughs> Right there. Do you wake up with thoughts? Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. For best-selling author Anne Rice, it's been a dramatic, some might say shocking, conversion. This, for example, is a beautiful crucifix that was in a Carmelite convent in New Orleans. Home in Southern California with her antique doll collection and her late husband's paintings, her return to religion is everywhere. That's a statue of our Blessed Mother. This is a statue of the boy Jesus. After nearly four decades as an avowed atheist writing about vampires, Anne Rice is back in the Catholic Church. Back in her favorite writing attire, flannel nightgowns, and writing about Jesus. The first in her series of books was published last fall. Christ the Lord is about Jesus as a seven-year-old, something the Bible never touched. I wanted to say, look, you know, the story is is considered by skeptics to be far-fetched. The virgin birth, the magi, the shepherds, okay, it's far-fetched. Come with me and when you're in this novel, you're gonna believe it. I'm gonna make you believe it. I'm gonna use every skill that I ever used to make you believe in vampires and witches so that you call me at home at night and ask me if they really exist. I'm gonna use that same skill to make you believe that Jesus is the Son of God. That's my mission. Most of these books I've been through and I've extracted something and learned something from just about every one. Rice may be hoping for a miracle, but consider her track record. When it comes to the supernatural, her books have sold more than 50 million copies worldwide. In them, Rice broke popular convention, telling stories not from the victim's point of view, but from the vampires. She wrote her debut novel, Interview with the Vampire, in 1973. <laughs> The film version starred Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt as Rice's glamorous, sympathetic, and sensual vampires. And now Broadway is about to host her vampire Lestat, a musical. Were vampires the first thing you thought of writing no, about? No, not at all. Not at all. I stumbled over the idea of writing from the point of view of a vampire. It was just something I tried one night. I was just sitting at the typewriter and I thought, well, let me give this a try. What would it be like if you could get a vampire to tell you what his experiences were? Like an interview with a vampire. Her books, says Rice, reflect a long personal journey. These are French dolls and they probably come from 1890. As do the fragile dolls she collects. Like these dolls like this spot. If they didn't, you'd know. They would look droopy. Why dolls? Why collect dolls? I don't know. I love them. Maybe it's something to do with my daughter losing her. Her name was Michelle, and she died of leukemia just before her sixth birthday in 1972. It was in the wake of mourning while living in San Francisco that Rice found her voice. The vampire was a perfect metaphor for the way I felt. I felt like a lost person, a person in the dark, a person who was trying to find meaning in life, trying to find a context. New Orleans was often the setting, the hometown she moved back to in 1988 with her husband Stan, a painter and poet, and their son Christopher. He says he learned early he didn't exactly have the parents next door. You definitely had to become a storyteller early on to hold your own in the conversation. And you definitely had to become good at Scrabble at age seven. We were playing <laughs> Scrabble when I was seven. And they were yanking out these words like charlatan, and I was doing dough, you know? Rice was a celebrity, and once famously dressed for the occasion. At what point did you kind of realize, or do you remember realizing, well, my parents are, are more intense than other people? I think it was when we moved to New Orleans. I think, I think that's when I began to see other people relate to mom as if she were Anne Rice. And that move to New Orleans also coincided with the publication of The Queen of the Damned, which is the book that changed the way we lived mm -hmm. forever. It earned back its advance in five minutes. You know, yeah. They were selling it out of cartons on the floor. Yeah. And that, that was great. And then the movie, Interview with the Vampire, was my high school lifestyle change. That's when the other kids at high school were like, dude, your mom's weird, but like, cool. <laughs> She was born in 1941 into a strict Catholic family. Her given name, 
Howard O'Brien, after her father. As a young child, she changed her name to Anne. Mass was a daily ritual. Belief was a shield against hardship. My mother died um, very young. She died in her 40s, and she died from complications of alcoholism. How could you put this together with this Catholic life? You were leaving. Uh, I think even then, in the 50s, we had a sense that it was a disease, that it was something, you know, uh, a terrible disease. And the one time she talked to me about it, she described it that way as a craving in the blood. That's what she said it was. She asked me to say the rosary with her, and she said her father had had it, and she had it, and it was a craving in the blood. It was after a move to Texas in high school that Rice says she could no longer reconcile her sheltered childhood with modern life. I was curious. I think curiosity is what destroyed me as a Catholic. Wanting to know, wanting to read books that were technically in those days forbidden. They were on the index of forbidden books. You know, it was a very tight world then, the Catholic world. So you gave up religion? I, I lost my faith. I stopped believing it. I stopped believing in my church and then I stopped believing in God. I think the two were very intimately connected for me. Rice says she wanted to make her own meaning and soon after married Stan, the love of her life, and an atheist too. It wasn't until the late 90s, says Rice, that her faith returned. It was studying the Roman Empire and studying the first century that got me involved. I started to read the Bible, I started to read about the Jews in history, and I could not figure out, strictly from a secular historical standpoint, how they could have survived. And I began to think, is this the hand of God? However profound, Rice's passage from vampires to Christ has raised some eyebrows. After all, her vampires were erotic creatures. And under pseudonyms, she once actually wrote softcore porn. I wrote what I thought was almost like a theme park of S&M, a little safe theme park, you know. And those books are still out there. And as far as I know, they've never done anybody any harm. I mean, the people that bring them to the signings are usually married people, and usually ladies. And they're laughing. You know, we love your dirty books, they say. They'll have a baby in a stroller, and they'll say, we love your dirty books. Write some more. But Rice has left her old writing behind. She also left behind the city she loves, New Orleans, just five months before Hurricane Katrina. The whole New Orleans experience for me, beautiful as it was and rewarding as it was, was intensely painful. It was often very dark. Your husband died. <clears throat> yes, that was the final thing that happened. He got sick with a brain tumor and died in four and a half months. And he was a healthy man, a strong, healthy, vital man, painting pictures. Painting. He had left behind 300 canvases. She wanted to be closer to her son, a writer himself, who lives nearby in Los Angeles. She was two hours south from me by car, and I was the only driver in the family. <laughs> <laughs> so I was in control of when Whoa. we saw each other. Whoa. <laughs> Christopher, who says he believes in a god, but isn't Christian, is openly gay. A fact some of his mother's new Christian readers find disturbing. I think there was a point a, a couple of weeks after the book came out where you were bemoaning the number of emails that she had received about her gay son. But I have also received hundreds of emails from people, and Christians included, and Catholics, who say we admire you for sticking up for gay people, and we admire you for sticking up for your son. Right. Love your son. And there is a great shift right now in favor of accepting gay people into the churches, and it's happening all over right. America, and it's a wonderful thing. Orthodoxy, Rice says, moves slowly. But eventually, she believes, the church will relax its attitude about sex, a topic that never seemed to worry Christ, she says. He didn't go ranting all over the Holy Land about sex. He was talking about love. Love, loving one another. Rice says it's Christ's message of love she hopes to get across to her readers. She recently toured the Holy Land to make sure she gets it all just right. Now, Bethany, where Mary and Martha lived, it wouldn't be here, would it? It was right behind the mountain. Right behind the and mountain. And it's still there. Okay. She is awed, she says, by Jerusalem's long history. You know, there's a part of every human being, even, even an atheist, um, that acknowledges something completely mysterious about life itself. This is the place where Jesus Christ was born. I mean, he changed history like nobody in Western civilization. He changed the history of the world. Rice's series of novels will follow Jesus through his life. She hopes to make the world of Jesus as compelling as the world of vampires, where once she reigned.